Welcome back, Legends. I hope you're all fantastic. It is time for another installment of Friday q and I hope you've all had a fantastic week. This one, we're going to go through some questions. And in the second half, I want to include some footage from last weekend where I did a few workshops at the Strings Attached Festival because they actually directly relate to some questions that I've got all the time on the channel. Uh, again, if you want to support the channel, there are links in the video description to do that. If you want to join the Discord server and take part in things like the monthly jam that we do, there is a link to that in the video description. Let's get straight into the questions. And the first one is about Fame guitars, which I had not heard about. And I went and checked them out and they do some pretty interesting looking stuff. I I'm quite curious to know how their lower end models would go because as somebody who often teaches beginners, uh, finding good beginner guitars is always a little bit of a struggle. And they do some kind of like, you know, beginner priced relic stuff, which looks interesting, but they have stuff like their PRS looking uh, guitars, which are pretty interesting, especially because they have the sort of more like Les Paul, you know, tailpiece and bridge setup. They look good. Has anybody out there tried them? Uh, do you like them? Uh, what's your experience being like with them? What can you tell me about them? Because uh, I've got no hands-on experience with them, unfortunately. Gus G is amazing. I remember hearing Firewind right around the time I started getting into uh, a lot of you know modern like power metal and things like that from Europe, and they were one of my favorite bands in that whole genre. And then obviously he did the Aussie thing, just a phenomenal player and he's got the touch and he's got the tone and he can shred, but then he's got the kind of Gary Moore thing where, you know, he's, he can play incredibly tastefully as well. So uh, I feel like Firewind did, did they do out in the fields or something like that? They did a Gary Moore cover that's very, very good. Someone's slamming their brakes on and one of the parrots is uh, parroting away outside. So uh, excuse all the weird noises. Uh, on guitars, solo guitars, I, have I played a solo guitar? I still haven't played a solo guitar. I would like to try one. Uh, and on that note, have I tried an Evertune bridge? I would especially like to try a solo guitar with an Evertune bridge because I actually got to try an Evertune bridge for the first time on the weekend. And you can check out, if you go to the end of the video, watch my like real time reaction. Cause I did a, it was called a listening session with my good friend, Mark Devadamo from the awesome band Psychonaut. And basically people just bought their guitars up and got us to try them. And I finally got to try an Evertune and you can hear all my thoughts about that at the end of the video, uh, which, and again, that kind of ties in. If I'm going to try a solar, I will probably try one with an Evertune. Uh, spoiler, pretty awesome. Uh, when are we jamming? Well, if you want to jam in not real time, like I said, you can jump on the Discord server and we do a Discord collaboration video. This month's video, I think, is over like a 6-4 funk backing track, which uh, absolute legend, funky stick man, Jeff, and another one of the mods uh, put together. Uh, shout out to you two legends, because it's a really, really fun track. Looking forward to showing you all of that. Uh, my acoustic preset for the FM3, I'm going to do a video on acoustic guitar and looping and all that kind of stuff with the FM3. So I'll share that preset then, but it's not very interesting. It's like a compressor, a looper, an EQ, and the recording Studio C reverb, nothing too over the top. Unlike this tone, right? <laughs> That's pretty good. That's the new Zephyr delay for the Axe FX3 as well, which is probably my favorite delay type right now. Uh, speaking about some fractal stuff, uh, which expression pedal? I've got both an EV1 and an EV2. The EV2 is on my, sounds like I'm saying the Pokemon EV. EV1, that's a little bit better. Uh, the big one I'm using with the FM9, which I'm gigging at the moment, and the little one, the EV2, is on my new X Bumblebee board with my FM3, that's nice and compact, and that's my fly rig. So uh, yeah, if you like the really smooth kind of volume style pedals, the fractal ones are great. If you want a traditional wah style housing, I really like the mission stuff as well, and I use that for quite a while as well. Uh, this is an interesting preset. Uh, did it take a bit of time to get used to playing with a wedding ring on? And uh, I will be honest, not really, because uh, I just have a very, very simple stainless steel band. It kind of doesn't get in the way. That part of my hand will sometimes do that and hit the side of the guitar. I find myself like tapping it on stuff like my desk all the time just to get like a percussive noise. So uh, it didn't really take getting used to for playing guitar, but it did make me a whole lot more annoying to be around because I'm constantly, hey, I found something I can tap on. 
there you go, I'm playing drums now in my head. And I know that sounds terrible, but in my head, it sounds like John Bonham or something like that. So uh, not so much, but I do know some people who have far more elaborate rings and they take theirs off when they play guitar for that reason. And uh, you, I mean, yeah, you're really gonna like damage the value of your guitar by scratching it with a wedding ring. I'm sure that might happen. Hasn't really happened to mine. Jumping all over the place, the virtual Jeff. I have seen that. I was checking Instagram last night and I saw Brett Kingman's video on it. And I think my comment on it was just like, what? Uh, really, really cool idea. I'm surprised it hasn't been done before. The polyphonic pitch shifting on it sounds pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, check out the virtual Jeff. Really, really interesting. It's a digital pitch shifter, but it works like a whammy bar that you put on your guitar. So pretty interesting. If you've got a guitar like this and you don't want to route it out for a Floyd Rose or something ridiculous, pretty cool thing to have a look at. What's the difference between an impedance curve and a cabinet simulation? I would describe it like this. Uh, an impulse response, you're talking digital modeling and things like that. Uh, an impulse response of your guitar cabinet is going to capture the frequency response of your cabinet. So, you know, when you plug into a 4x12 Marshall with greenbacks and it like, it has a sound, kind of no matter what you plug into it, then that's what the impulse response is capturing together, obviously with the microphone and the preamp and all the other stuff that goes into it. The impedance curve you can think of as, that's what the amplifier sees when it's connected to the cabinet. So you plug your amp in and it sees a particular load on there. And that load, it's like a, you know, there's a feedback system in there. It's going to change the way the amplifier responds at certain frequencies. So uh, it's really interesting on the Axe FX3 with the impedance curve modeling and all the fractal products. Now you can go in and you can look at the different impedance curves and you'll notice different resonant peaks and troughs. And uh, yeah, it's, I would, I would say it like this, let's say you fixed the IR, then changing the impedance curve is going to change the sound a little bit, but it's mostly going to change the feel and the way the amplifier responds. And it's a very non-scientific way of looking at it, but that is very much my experience with it. And uh, finding the right impedance curve, which kind of gives you the thump that you like, is probably the best way to just go searching through them. Uh, you don't have to be super authentic with it. Just find the one that sounds really, really good. I like the 4x12 5153 in there for just about everything, which I'm using on this. <laughs> Sounds good and it feels good. And that's what it is all about. Where are we with these questions? Do I still have my Laney GH? Emphasis on the H, 100. What did I have, a 100 or a 50? I can't remember because I sold it to one of my students. So uh, John, if you're watching this video, I really hope you are enjoying the Laney. It's a great, great amp. Those toroidal transformers in there make it a really, really powerful and kind of like, it's got this really particular attack that you don't really get from a Marshall or anything like that. There's kind of like very little sag. It's a tight, tight sounding app. Fantastic value for money if you're looking for a great, you know, hot rodded JCM 800 style tube amp that can absolutely roar. What are my thoughts on the Perth music scene, uh, specifically guitar based music? Uh, you know, I feel like I've been asked this a lot and I kind of have a stock answer for it, but uh, for the sort of music that I like, it's not a lot happening. You know, there's not really that many bands that sound like Ragdoll. And that's kind of been the advantage that we've had where when we're on a bill, or we're either playing with a band that's kind of like a, a little bit more of a rock and roll band and we're that weird heavy band, or we're playing with a bunch of metal bands and we're that kind of weird, softer, melodic, hard rock band. And I found that's kind of really worked to our advantage, even though most of our audience is overseas. Uh, what I found is that just because I think we've been doing it long enough and we've done covers and you know played all around the country and been really lucky to play all around the world is that you just get good at playing to the room and kind of reading the room. And uh, our residency at Convenience has kind of been very much like that. You know, you look around, you look at the room, it's like, play some of our own stuff or do we play an ACDC song or do you just do you know a pop song that a bunch of people want to dance to and that's really really fun so uh, I feel like Perth is just lucky to have a music scene at the moment and if you're into really extreme metal and really heavy stuff some phenomenal bands coming out of Perth if you're more into the kind of indie rock stuff or you're into punk some phenomenal bands uh you know we're just kind of one of those few weird bands that does like melodic hard rock or, you know, I've heard it called active rock in America, but uh, yeah, it always makes playing on bills fun because 
all the bands sound really, really different. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way to say that, like, you know, Perth has the world's greatest music scene. But you know what? At the moment, it is solid enough and there's gigs and people are able to go out and express themselves. And I think that is what really, really matters when you're trying to play music. In fact, you can actually go and make loud noises in a public space is a very, very uh, fortunate thing. Uh, all right. Interesting question with old rack gear. Let's pivot to that. A patch bay or a line mixer for incorporating your digital effects. I went the line mixer route. I really like having the AUX sends on there. So chuck in an H3000 or an Eclipse or the PCM81 on things like that. Uh, if you're going to be running them 100% wet and using them as like sends in your door or something like that, probably a patch bay would make a lot more sense. Interesting. Latency. This is going to be the last question, by the way. So uh, we're going to pivot over to looking at some strings attached stuff just after this. Uh, what is latency and why are my tracks out of sync in my workstation? Latency is just a time delay. I did a whole video about this. Uh, you know, most people cannot perceive below 15 to 10 milliseconds of latency in real time. But that's obviously very important when you're recording something and you don't have latency compensation on your tracks to make sure everything lines up. So uh, if you want to correct latency, it's just a very small delay and you can uh, either calibrate your external gear with your interface or you can just shift tracks over until they sound good. So yeah, it's just a very, very short time delay. It's a fancy name for it. And you know when you have digital to analog converters, they take a tiny amount of time to sample the incoming content. So that's why you get that particular time delay. All righty. Thank you all so much for this week's questions. If you have questions for next week, put them in the comments section below. The usual links to support the channel are there and uh, enjoy my real-time reaction to an Evertune bridge and just a few other things with my buddy Mark. Massive thank you to Strings Attach Festival for having me. I'm looking forward to going back down next year. And if you haven't watched the live stream that I did of my workshop on the Saturday, that's up on the channel. <laughs> You kind of have these three levels of suspension and is it tuning up is mode three that's the yep. kind of rock solid i would be so, uh three would be with the tune activated yep two sorry and three is where it plays like a function guitar. okay so if i tune it down like that this is just going to be the ever tune's not on it'll go it will start the ever tune and go into basically what mode where you have the strings off yep if you tune up it will stay in the ever tune mode until you start going sharp right Cool, cool. Awesome. So, all right, let's uh, let's hear this. What? What? Okay, so a really quick example. I normally play in, this guitar's in drop C sharp, right? So I normally play in drop C and who likes Black Sabbath? Yeah. Who likes uh, Master of Reality in particular? Definitely. You know when you you can hear Iommi play and he plays a note hard and it goes... That's what, you know, that's what a standard guitar does. You, you wiggle the string, it does the... That rhymes. All right, I'm gonna wiggle the string. Wiggle. wiggle it, wiggle it good. It's not moving. So the primary function of this would be, you know, I'm imagining a lot of things. If something that's not modern metal would be like playing slide would be amazing on this if you set it up right, because you just wouldn't, your guitar would never go out of tune. Um, this is really, really interesting. Like. I'll, I'll pass it back to you in a sec, but it's like- I'm waiting. <laughs> it feels like you have the heaviest gauge strings possible on, but they're, still but they're light. Yeah. What, what I like, what I do a lot of with my band, Ragdoll is like play a lot of chords like this. You can actually, like you can hear all the notes yeah, in that, hey, clear. that's amazing. Oh, 
yeah, there's some vibrato coming on. Guys, how does this work? I'm, I'm guessing it has something to do with this on the back. Can everybody see? That doesn't look like a kind of standard telecaster thing. Yeah, it's witchcraft. Have a go. attack and a um, little bit of twang in there too. It's, it's really weird. Uh, I went to one of the caves today, it was a lake cave, and you either have the overhang thing with the, and you still do like, it's like that. You feel like you're just going to snap the string off. Like, oh, I can't go, can't go too far. I'm sharp. Activating something back there. Yeah. So there's uh, there's two points in here, basically called a bend stop. Basically, it's the, the saddles are floating. Right. And then when you use these to tighten the string, it pulls the, the saddle closer to a stop. When it gets to that stop, it stops activating. That's when it turns into. But if you if you're set the saddle just below that, you're still in the, act, the like ever tune mode, but when yeah, you're yeah. this, you're actually pulling it sharper. So it gets that stop and that's where you get the vibrato. Or Interesting. So, I, I genuinely didn't know that it worked like that. I just thought it was like a really good solid bridge, you know, like. This is something it's, it's actually something new. Yeah. <laughs> Band. Uh, Alvin Chain. Yes. Correct. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Uh, let's let's stay with that uh, that era, shall we? And I'll do. Um... Yes, That's it. 10 points to Gryffindor. Uh, and if you like those bands and you haven't heard this band, then... Like, no, I actually don't know. So I've been I've been playing this riff. Uh, that's by a band called King's X. Uh, who, yes, you should you should all go and listen to King's X if you like guitar music. Amazing, amazing band.